In light of all the theories we've learned, there are a few theories that appeal to me less than others because of the way in which they neglect to include marginalized people's opinions in the planning process. One of these is rational planning. I realized it was important for me to understand rational planning because it allows me to gain conviction in planning practices that are considerate and inclusive of all population sentiments and ideas for their own communities. I used TIF planning in Chicago to demonstrate this point. Understanding rational planning theory as it relates to TIF planning allows me to identify and dissect the core impetus of TIF planning and the resulting patterns of the methods which stem from it. In Chicago, TIF planning has consistently been of contentious debate. TIF stands for Tax Increment Financing, a tool that a city can use to generate money for economic development in blighted areas. When a TIF district is established, the tax revenue collected within the district for distribution to schools and other government entities is frozen. As this money is being spent on the TIF district, it's expected that property values will rise within the TIF. The extra tax revenue generated by the rise is supposed to be earmarked for improvements within the TIF. Cities use TIF to finance public infrastructure, land acquisition, demolition, and other improvements. TIFs are designed to lure employers into struggling communities with the promise that tax revenue will be reinvested locally to attract more businesses, workers, consumers, and residents. Earlier this year, Chicago's latest TIF scandal was a distribution of $55 million TIF dollars from the south side of Chicago to the redevelopment of Navy Pier. There was a noticeable demand and outcry for Chicago's TIF system to be more transparent um, with citizen input. Of the different planning theories we've discussed, rational planning most adheres to the description of Chicago's TIF distribution process as it is an attempt by the city to determine and alleviate blight in an efficient, utilitarian manner. Certain signs say that utilitarians seek a planning process that determines the best means to maximize the good, which is happiness or well-being. There is a need for Chicago, a city that is steadily losing its population and is clamoring for millennials to move there to help spur the city's development of attractive places and economic engines. While TIF in Chicago is not so transparent for residents, it allows the city leaders and planners to efficiently make the best judgments on important development investments. Such investments bolster the city in its entirety when they spur the growth of capital through an influx of tourist visits and new permanent residents, which maximizes the overall good. Understands that something as critical as the allocation of TIF money cannot go to developers with typical bureaucratic speed. If taxpayers were to engage in some sort of democratic process with the city on the allocation of TIF money, there is a chance that these development projects would not happen because such a process would be so slow going. For example, under advocacy planning, participatory planning, or communicative planning, the TIF distribution process will be significantly slower since there are different stakeholders that have different agendas with the TIF funding. Debate is typically present when there is a broad range of voice. Not only would the TIF allocation be slow, it is possible that under different types of planning, the potential development at hand will be dismissed because of the negotiations taking place. If TIF development projects were to not exist due to this inefficiency, the city as a whole would lose. Using planning theory, I understand a lot of the motivations behind rational planning and TIF. The rational planning in Chicago's TIF emphasizes growth, development, and general city betterment. However, they do it behind closed doors where residents do not have any input whatsoever on where TIF funds should go. While rational planning for Chicago's TIF may have earnest goals, I would argue that an emphasis on creating a more transparent, democratic TIF process that includes all residents' voices and ideas, especially marginalized communities, would seem just as economically effective and would generally be better for city morale. 
Plural planning requires more time, effort, negotiation, and creativity, but such a process is important as the communities need to have a stake and investment in the TIF distribution process to help ensure that these TIF investments are sustainable.